What's up guys? I'm Travis and you're watching Upgraded RC. <laughs> Well, I went ahead 
I cut it down even more. I found this, I found this white one. I can't remember what I found it off of, but I found a white one also. And I even cut this little piece out here to put in front of it to make that look pretty cool. So I don't know, I think we're getting down to the right size now. I mean, I don't know what color is the best, but I mean, they make these in orange and blue and black and green. And it just depends on what you're looking at, if you're gonna use this for your print scoop or air scoop, whatever it's gonna be. Anyway, um, I decided against that altogether, and I went ahead and took the first piece that we had here, and I thought about, well, how about if I put that back here? So I cut it a little bit more, and I got that to sit back there. Now I'm thinking this, this might actually be a better idea. Reason why? Because if I put the hood scoop on the front, it's going to suck air here, but it's also going to throw the dirt and the dust and all that stuff all over my motor and my ESC and everything else. So I know that these holes here in the fenders also float quite a bit of air and put a lot of dirt out there, but I'm not really interested in putting any more. So I kind of avoided that idea. And that's, that's why I went back here and I was saying, man, if I can put it back there, that sure does look sharp. And uh, if I take another piece like this hood scoop that we have on the front and I put this like this so that essentially if this is on the bottom of the body and this is on top, now we've got something here to where the air is going to flow in through here around our nice smooth curve and then down this curve on the bottom and right straight out on top of my fans. I was thinking, wow, that's great. That's going to be an awesome idea. But the more I thought about it, I thought, well, all the air coming in here is going to be the same as the air coming in here. And because I'm trying to blow backwards, it's probably not going to be that efficient. It's not going to work out that great. So this would be awesome if I had two things to make it work. Number one would be a cooling fan up here somewhere to help suck more air than the fenders are putting in so that it doesn't force this air backwards. The other thing is I would probably want a foam pad or something in here, some sort of a filter, so that it's not dumping out right on top of my cooling fans with a whole bunch of dirt and dust and everything else. So I abandoned that idea. Then I came up with this. And this is probably the coolest thing so far. I made these to look exactly the same on both sides. And what these do, guys, if I put one of these here like this, now we've got a way to get all of this hot air out of the top of this cab right here through this corner. So if I put one of these on both sides like this, as these air, air scoops that are actually venting the air and flowing out instead of flowing in, that's going to help this car dissipate heat a little bit better. So that's what we're going with. Let me show you what I use to cut these up so you guys know what's going on. I'll help you out a little bit here. Come over here to my metal table, guys, where I usually make most of my messes. It's just better to clean up here. Um, so you can see I took a bunch of these pieces off of uh, probably every bottle in my house so I could do some experiments. And what I did, the easiest way to hold this, guys, just so you know, this is a piece of steel, but if you find the right piece, it works out really good for holding it. You can take your, your piece here and put it on top, and then I zip tied it here to hold it, and then I can stick it in a vise and go ahead and cut it. Now, I tried cutting this first of all. I tried cutting it with the razor knife. Uh, it works pretty good as far as cutting it goes, but if you get, you get to that point where you start cutting it and it, it wants to go across and it's not a nice straight line and it, it kind of screws you up a little bit. Plus, if, when this you're cutting this, you got to put a lot of pressure on it, so if, it's, if it comes off, you're going to cut yourself. So this probably didn't work out that well. Um, after that, I went ahead and I went with a Dremel and a cutoff wheel. And this worked the best by far, guys. Now, it melted the plastic a little bit around the cuts, but right after that, I could just take and peel all those little pieces off. I mean, they just, they just come right off like, like nothing. And then, then you end up with this nice smooth edge here. So that's pretty much how I cut this stuff. Um, and after I got done cutting it, I peeled the plastic off and then went around it with a hobby knife to, to clean it up. So if you guys choose to cut some of these pieces up for your car, please be very careful. That's why I showed you how you could uh, hold it on the end of the pipe like that with a zip tie so you wouldn't have to hold it. I started out like that, holding a little piece of the knife, and it's, it's pretty dangerous for your fingers. It's probably not a good idea. As a matter of fact, I don't even think I'm allowed to tell you guys to do this, so don't do it. It's bad. You'll hurt yourself. But if you want to, please be careful. And I didn't tell you to do it. So moving on. 
how we're going to attach this, guys, we're going to go ahead and drill half inch holes here in the corners. And then I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to go old fashioned and I'm just going to super glue it on with some really good super glue. Now, I thought about many ways to attach this because when we're in a wreck, it may or may not come off if it hits. I don't know if this is in the point of uh, destruction here or not when it's rolling over. We're going to find out. Um, another way I thought of this here is a piece of all thread with a hole all the way through it. It's what you buy at Home Depot for like a lampshade, a whole lampshade on it. The cord goes through the center, and then you've got nuts here to hold everything on. Well, I thought maybe if I could take my plastic welder and weld a little bit here on the bottom, I could put this in here with a nut and then a nut washer on the back side inside the car to hold it on. But I think we're getting way too overkill here, guys. I don't think it's necessary. I'm just going to try the super glue. If it works great, if it doesn't, I'll come up with something else, silicone or epoxy or I don't quite know yet. But anyway, we're just going to put them on there and we're going to go try it out and see how it works, see how much air dissipates through these and how much it helps out the, the van. So I chose to go with the air scoops on the back here. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to want to drill this hole as high as possible to get the most amount of air out of the cab. Now, let me show you underneath what's going on here because there's a mount for your endoskeleton that you're going to hit and you're going to want to make sure that you miss that. Let me zoom in here, I'll show you. So after you take the cover off and you look inside, here is a corner we want to drill a hole in right here. Now see how close this mount right here is for your endoskeleton? We don't want to drill through that. So I would recommend drilling from the inside out to get a good mark, a pilot hole first, and so that you can miss this. Then we can flip it over to the other side and go ahead and drill the rest of it out this way. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay. Well, we got our hole drilled here now, guys, and I went ahead and went with half inch because that's what size this here will cover. Let me see here. It's this one. So then this should just sit on here like this, and it should look pretty good. I mean, you could just leave the holes there if you wanted to. I don't think it's going to hurt too much. You just, you might get a little bit of dirt or mud in there. And then also, I was thinking the scoop, with the curve on the scoop, it's going to help actually draw some hot air out. So, that's pretty much what I did on both sides, guys. About the same place on both sides, so that it looks the same, and that this can cover it up. Now, we'll go ahead and glue that on there and see what it looks like. So there it is. Got it all glued on here. I think they look pretty good. Kind of reminds me of the, uh, the fast back. Mustangs, the uh, scoops, the lures they had on the rear back in the day. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. I don't know exactly what they're called, but that's kind of what it looks like. And being that we've got them up here so high, it's going to get all this heat out of here. So I think that's going to work pretty good. Hopefully, the super glue holds. But guys, what I did was I just went ahead and took a little bit of sandpaper and I roughed up this area right here where we're going to put our air duct. And that way, the super glue gets a little bit better stick than just to the flat, smooth black sand. It's got some bite. Um, I went ahead and let it dry, and then I did it again, I let it dry, and I did it again. So it's got three coats on here. I'm hoping it'll stay on here through a couple of wrecks. And guys, I went ahead and used uh, Loctite, the gel control. Um, you can use whatever you want to, but just to make sure you have control of, of the super glue you're putting on there. If super glue runs down on your Lexan here, it will stick to it before you can get it off. There's nothing you can do, and it, it kind of melts into the Lexan and ruins it. So be careful that you don't let your super glue run anywhere. Put on the right amount that you need, right where you need it. This gel control really helps out with that, just so you know. Okay guys, well that's pretty much it for the air scoops. Um, I did find one more I just wanna show you. This, this was off of a, a vacuum that I had, a vacuum hose, and I thought about maybe putting that there. That looks pretty good too. I think that looks even better than the, the square hood scoop. And then you could, maybe you could put it up here or here. You know, I, I don't know, I mean, the sky's the limit, guys. It's just whatever you guys want to do. You know, I, I think it looks pretty good like this. I also like, I like this look here. So, I mean, that's possible. You can do pretty much whatever you want to do. The sky's the limit, you don't have to copy me. Do whatever you want to do. The biggest thing is, get the heat out. <laughs> Okay guys, so I've shown you how to get some of the hot air out of your body cover here. Now let's go ahead and move on to the cooling fans and see if we can dissipate some of that heat off the motor. So like I said guys, there's a lot of cooling fans out there. Based on what I've seen, 
Um, I'm sure there's probably better stuff out there, more high dollar, but based on what I've seen, the Castle Creations and the Traxxas are probably on the top of my charts right now. The reason why is because they have high volume fans that are pulling more CFM and they also have a better shroud to push the CFM through and help dissipate the motor heat better. So that's probably why they're on the top, but you guys have probably heard me talk before about being a huge local fan as far as buying at your local hobby shop. Um, I really like that. I need to keep them open, guys. If you break and you want to keep running, you're going to order it from Amazon and wait three or four days, maybe if you're lucky to get it. Or you can just run down the street to your local hobby shop, pick up the parts you need, you're back out there bashing again in 20, 30 minutes, you know? I mean, that's kind of why I'm such a big fan. Keep your local hobby shop open, guys, okay? It's important. Anyway, my local hobby shop didn't have Castle Creations or the Traxxas one. The only one they had was the Power Hobby. And I'm going to show this to you, we'll explain it a little bit better. But for $9.95, I was like, sold. Let's do it. Sounds good to me. So let's check out this cooling fan here and see what it comes with. This is the Power Hobby cooling fan. It's aluminum. And it, the part number on this one is P-H-B-F-S-B-L-U-E for blue. Now they come in green and red and black and silver and gold. And I've seen a lot of these. But for $9.95, guys, I don't really know how you can go wrong. If I can get a year out of this, that would be great. So let's open this up here. Let's see what this actually looks like. Well, that's not too bad. You can see that we got the two cooling fans here. I know they're not high CFM, like I said about the Traxxas or the Castle Creations, but I bet they're going to do pretty good. Um, and then they've got this, this just a little, a little C clamp here, just a clip that's going to straddle your motor and go on top of it. And that's how it's going to hold on. And what it's doing is the air is blowing down through this shroud and it's coming out and it's dissipating through these fins that it has here, as well as pushing the heat down off the motor. Like I said before, it's sucking downward. That's why we were talking about getting the hot air out of the body cover so that we can suck cool air instead of hot. Now, I also went ahead and bought a switch here, guys. I got this at my local hobby shop as well. This is uh, $7.99. It's made by Tactic. And all this is is an on-off switch. It's going to connect to my receiver, and then it's going to connect to my cooling fan. That way I don't have to open up the receiver box if I ever want to take and just turn my cooling fan off because, oh, I don't know, it's winter time or something like that. It's just not necessary to have it on. So all I have to do is mount the switch somewhere. I can flick it back and forth and turn my fan on and off whenever I want to. I know that if this fan is not drawing a lot of power, that's not what I'm concerned about. What I'm concerned about is the lifespan on these fans here. If they don't need to be running in cool temperature, I can just turn it right off of this switch. I think it's going to be pretty good. Let's go ahead and uh, see where we're going to mount this and how it's going to work out. So to install our switch correctly, guys, we're going to take and remove this cover here off our receiver so that we can go ahead and plug into auxiliary. I'm going to use auxiliary port number three here. We're going to go ahead and plug into that with our switch. And then I'm going to run our switch down through this box and underneath and out. So I'm going to need to remove this motor to be able to set my wiring the way that I need to do it. So it's a really nice, clean wiring harness. We're going to do that first. I'll install the switch and then we'll go ahead and install the motor and I'll uh, show you what's going on after that. Okay guys, now that the motor's gone off of here, you can really see what's going on. And I've also taken off the cover for the receiver. And this piece back here, which is the wire router, it's a little plastic piece built under the receiver box so that you can go ahead and route your wires through here so it all looks really nice and you have nice wire routing. That way there's no issues with wiring problems and stuff. So we went ahead and did that. Now after you do that, you can, you can route your wires through here into your receiver. And then I plugged in to auxiliary number three because I didn't have anything going on there. Now after you do this, go ahead and start your car up and make sure that your switch, your fans come on and everything works because if it doesn't, then you've plugged it into your receiver the wrong direction. You also want to make sure your fans are blowing the correct direction, which is blowing air down. Let's see what we got here. If I turn this switch on, oh, there they go, they come on. I can feel it, it's definitely blowing down. I have it plugged into the receiver the correct way. I'll turn my switch off, 
they stop. Okay, let's go ahead and finish our routing here. And I'm just going to route this out through this wire router, put the covers back on, and then I think I'm going to just put my switch right here. This is probably right here so that I can just put some two-way tape on it or something, and that'll hold it right there. It's kind of out of the way. Let's go ahead and put that back together. Okay, guys. So after I got my wires routed through the wire router and back out, I closed up my receiver and my wire router box here and then I put my motor back on and I ran my wires from my fan through the back here. There's a little notch here on your ESC where some wires can go through and miss your motor so it's not affecting anything. And uh, the slack, I went ahead and just zip tied that up here to these motors to keep it a nice clean look. Now there is another wire coming off the switch that I got and it goes to another end which is made for a different receiver. So I'm not using that in, I just taped it up and zip tied it up here to keep that same clean look. And uh, if you guys notice where my switch is at, the wire coming out of the receiver here was very short. So I didn't have too much room, I just went ahead and put some two-way sticky tape there and stuck it on here. And that's pretty much it. Now the last part is going to be actually mounting the cooling fan to the motor, which is super simple guys. You're just going to put it up towards the front here straight up and down and push down on it and you can adjust it after that it's not a one-time thing it's you can move it back and forth a little bit get it nice and straight up and down and nice and tight on there and that's pretty much it that's what that's going to look like and i think it looks pretty clean hopefully it works good let's uh let's go ahead and turn it on to make sure it works before we button all this back up there's my esc fan now let's go ahead and turn these on Oh, works great. I can feel it. Got a decent amount of air coming out of the side there, guys. Okay, turn that back off. So I don't think it looks too bad, guys. I think it looks pretty good. It's really small and compact. So I think that because I didn't have to do any modifications, this Power Hobby fan just just falls right in place there was no problems at all guys anyway that's pretty much what it looks like let's see what it's going to do all right guys so i went ahead and took the dirt track six pack 3.9s off and went back to the stock uh Traxxas talons so what we're going to do here is we're going to run three tests and i want them to be as accurate as possible so i want this rig to be pretty much stock so that's why we put these tires on here. I went ahead and took these batteries out and I put fully charged 5,000 milliamp batteries in here so we can get as much heat as possible while I'm pushing it. And the other thing that I did was we went ahead and taped up the holes here that we just drilled for our ducts. I want this to be stocked as well so that these air ducts are not working right now. So what we'll do is we'll take the temperature of the motor right here where it sits, which right now my garage is at 89.4 degrees. And we're going to go ahead and run it for four minutes. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to check the temperature and see what the difference is. And then the next test will be with the duct tape off so that we can get some air flow in here and see what these are doing for us. We'll run it for four minutes, check it again. And then the very last test will be with the air ducts open for maximum airflow and the fan switch turned on. And we're going to see what kind of temperatures we get and if all of this was worth it or not. Anyway. Let me go run this through on my driveway, guys. I'm not going to load it up and take it to a track or anything. I think we'll just uh, go ahead and I got a driveway that's about 300 feet long full of gravel. We'll just run it back and forth for four minutes and get, get an accurate measurement and we'll go from there. All right, here we go, guys. I'm starting the timer.
4 minutes, 2 seconds, 0.22. Now let's rip this cover off see how hot it is. Alright, I'm going to unplug the batteries first. Safety first, guys. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's see, what do we got here? Oh man, 100, looks like 125, 26, we're going to call it 125 degrees. Alright guys, let's go ahead and do our second run now. I took the, uh, took the tape off of our holes here so that we can get maximum amount of airflow now. Let's check our temperature, see what we got. Looks like... 92 degrees right now. It's a little bit warmer in here, guys, because the temperature is rising. I'm right around 330 right now. So we're just going to go ahead and call that 92 degrees. Okay, guys, just came in from the second run. Looks like we ran for four minutes, two seconds, 0.87. Let's rip the cover off and see what kind of temperatures we got. See what we got. Oh, look at that, not too bad. Remember guys, we started at 92 degrees on the second run. The first run we started at 89 degrees. The temperature has definitely gotten hotter during the day. But wow, it's fluctuating back and forth, I think. I think we'll probably have to call that like 118, guys. Let's call it 118. Okay. I'm going to let this cool back down again for another 30 minutes or so, and we'll run it again. All right, guys, we're getting ready to go on our third and final test here. Got it cooled down. Let's see what it says here. It says 94 degrees, which that makes sense because our temperature gauge in the garage also says 94 degrees. God, it's getting hot here. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and make this third run, and I'll peel it off. We'll see what we got. We can get this done. All right, guys, third and final run is done. We ran for four minutes, three seconds, 0.2. Let's rip this thing off and see what we got. I'm so excited. I want to see the difference in the temperature here. I think we did pretty good. In all fairness, we'll turn this off and we'll unplug it just like we did before. Let's see what we got here, guys. Oh, -ho! 112, 113, 112, 111. I think we're going to have to call it 112, guys. 112. That's pretty damn good. All right, guys. That pretty much is going to wrap it up for the cooling fans as well. Um, you know, sometimes I have ideas that don't quite pan out. It feels really good because this one panned out a lot. I mean, just by adding these two air ducts right here, we dropped 10 degrees in temperature. And then when we turn the cooling fan on with the air ducts, we dropped another 8. I, I think that's awesome. What more can you ask for? I mean, I got $9 into it, plus $7 for the switch, and, you know, these were just kind of bottles laying around the house. Guys, it's been awesome. It's getting really hot here. It's up to 95 degrees here now. I got to get out of this heat. Um, you guys, send me pictures of what you're doing. Send me videos. Um, if you have any more questions or comments, please let me know. You guys have been doing a lot of that lately. I've been taking care of my answer, everything I can possibly answer with the best of my knowledge. Um, you guys are awesome. Thanks again for watching. If any questions, please let me know. Don't hesitate. I will get back with you. It might take me a while, but I will get back. Uh, like I said, send me the pics. Send me the videos. I'm, I want to see them, guys. I want to know what you guys think, what you're doing. I want to see what you're doing here. I think that'd be awesome. Anyway, you guys have a great rest of your day. I'm out of here. I'm going to go get in the air conditioning and cool off like my car did. We won today, guys. We beat the heat. Peace out.